Hey y'all, um, let's go over Sympathy for the Devil from Yaya's. Um, just to start, Mick Taylor's part, I don't really think it is worth worth a lesson. I mean, the, the solo, sure, but, um, you know, the rhythm, the rhythm part that he does, really just turn the song on, try to learn it for yourself. All it is is the open chords, you know, E major, D major, and A major. And then, you know, B major, he might play it here, he might play it here, you know, I mean, either way, it's, it's simple, you know, it's not to say it's not good, it's just, it's really not even worth, like, really just try to learn it for yourself if you don't already know it, you know, it's just, all it is is this. That's it, that's all there is to it. Um, Keith's part is a little more interesting, and the reason I want to do a lesson on it is because I think there's actually a lot of really good, interesting stuff that you can, that you can pull from it that'll help you, um, kind of understand the guitar better as an instrument and, and go up and down the neck a little bit easier. Um, so to start, Keith's is, Keith's part is based off of the A shape, the A major shape for E and D. <laughs> You know, so if he was just playing it as uh, Mick Taylor does, um, you know, he would play it like. You know, that's not what he does, though. But I think it's important to understand that he's using the A shape for E and D and then the E shape for A. Um, so... I mean, I'm sure anybody that's watching a guitar lesson on YouTube has probably also watched a couple Hendrix lessons. So he does take a little bit of a page from, you know, uh, Jimi Hendrix's book here. Uh, he's got... So for those of you that don't know, when you're in the A major shape for a chord, right? Like your E major is here. And Sympathy for the Devil is in the key of E. Your E major is also right here. So when you're doing your A major shape for the chord of E, um, you can slide up right, that's kind of like a Hendrixy thing you got there. And that's how Keith manages um, his rhythm part for the Yaya's version. So rather than just chunking on the chords, um, he does this. So he cuts out that, and he just starts by doing this, which is a hammer on from the ninth fret on the A string and the D string. to the 11th fret on the A string. So on the 9th, uh, A and D. Um, and then down to the D and G on the 9th fret. So it's in that major scale. So we'll, uh, one more time, the A and D on the 9th fret, and hammer on to the A on the 11th. And then from that 11th fret, you're going to go... down to that that D shape and you're going to do that same exact thing except it's not going to be up on the ninth fret it's going to be down on the uh, seventh and then you're hammering on to the ninth fret and then you're going up here
so um also something i did forget to mention i'm i did i did say earlier um a or sorry um e d and a that's at the end of the song when mick taylor is soloing that keith's gonna play the a like that he's actually managing the a chord out of this d shape way up here on the um ninth fret so if you have your uh index finger on the g fret or the g string on the ninth fret and then the ring finger on the b string at the 10th and the middle finger on the e string on the ninth fret so just like a d shape but you bring it up to the ninth fret that's an a chord as well and that's how keith gets that you can see that that's And this is what I was kind of talking about at the beginning when I said that there's a lot of important things about what Keith is doing here that's going to help you kind of move up and down the neck, right? Because while Mick Taylor is up here at the A, a shape, uh, open A chord, Keith is down here doing this. But he's just doing it with these kind of major scale licks. Because the A major pentatonic is there, I mean E major pentatonic is there, you can... Um, so I'll do one, one more quick run through. So this is your E chord, right? This is your, if you were just playing the chord, but you're kind of operating in that Hendrix major box there. Same for the D, you know, this is... But you're operating again in that kind of major lick Jimi Hendrix box. And then you're doing the D shape for the A major. But again, you're operating within that uh, major pentatonic box here. So it's like if you were playing. Um, um, it's kind of like if you were in open G, that's kind of a classic Keith way to fret that uh, major chord there. But <laughs> this is, this is I'm going to go a little bit down a rabbit hole here, but this is what's so cool about the way Keith plays this part is because even though he's fretting that E major, when he, so when he's playing the A, Mick Taylor's here, Keith is kind of here. But he's not, he's not actually playing that. I, I should make that clear. He's not actually playing this shape. He's doing this. But the reason that that works, even though it's kind of a classic, like, I mean, that is, that is an E major, you know? You know, that is the E shape. But because of the way that all the chords line up is that it's okay to play that suspension in E major because the all the notes you need for that A major D shape are in there. So you're actually kind of doing this. Um, so like, these are the two upper notes of like, you know, you got the D major down here, right? But if you're doing it up here to make an A chord, all you have to do is put this up here to get what Keith is doing. And then, you know, it allows him to immediately, without even moving anything, he just has to stop doing that suspension and flatten his finger to make the E chord. And there's your A major. And that's kind of why I love the way that Keith writes his... Uh, those those major bits when he does the that suspension i talked about this in my she's so cold video um but when you go up and down like this 
right? That's clearly an E. You're just doing a suspension to give it like a little bit of a flavor to it. Um, you know, a bit of an inflection, kind of like, I don't know, Honky Tonk Women has a lot of those inflections, right? But because he holds that, because he holds it, it becomes an A. And that allows him to just lift those fingers so that he's just doing that. So I'll go through, I'm sorry, enough rambling, I'll go through it. And that's really all there is to this part. Um, so for the chorus, Keith just does one notable thing. He just kind of goes. He's definitely just in that kind of E shape. So these, your index finger is going to cover the um, seventh fret on the B and E strings. Your middle finger is going to be on the eighth fret on the G. And then your ring finger is going to be on the ninth fret on the D string. Um, the only notable thing about how he plays the chorus is sometimes he'll do a unison bend an octave up. So all that is, is you've got your uh, index finger on the B string on the seventh fret. And your, uh, you know, it could be your middle finger. I don't, I don't know if I recommend the middle finger. I'd probably do the, the ring finger there. And your ring finger on the G string on the ninth fret. And that's that lick that he does sometimes during the chorus. So he'll do. That's all that is. is it's, he's just bending. He's holding the B string. He's holding the B string still, and then bending the G string up an octave to to meet the or up a step. I, did, I believe it'd be up a step. Yeah, he'd be up a step with that B that G string. And that's the all there is to it. But after um. McTay after Keith solos, it's a uh, it's time for Mc McTaylor to solo, and Keith he does some really interesting rhythm stuff that I feel like kind of goes unappreciated because most people are listening to uh, McTaylor's solo. Um, Keith comes back, so for the first solo, if you don't know, there's there's two solos that McTaylor does. You know he goes through his, you know, and then he does this one. Something like that in the major box, um, and then and goes through his whole thing. And while that's happening, Keith comes back to these boxes here. But then he will now incorporate that open A rather than that A that we had talked about up here. And rather than doing just this. just doing those chords like that um he does this again but he enunciates it more rather than hammering on like this he actually strums it so those are like kind of those classic open g suspensions that he's doing so like your uh, ring finger is up at the 11th on the D. You're leaving that, you're just kind of hitting that G string down here by barring. And then your middle finger is on the 10th fret on the B. Kind of like just how he was doing during the verses earlier. So he does this. And then he brings it back two frets. And then he goes all the way down to the A. And then when Mick 
Taylor finishes his first solo, Keith stops doing that and he goes into this. And he starts just kind of, kind of playing the um, normal power chords. <laughs> And then as Mick Taylor goes into his second solo, Keith starts to build in intensity. So I'm just going to kind of play a little bit, and then you can just try to get what you can out of it. So what I want to get, what I want people to get from that is that in this second part, when Keith, uh, when Mick Taylor goes into his second solo, Keith is letting this do all the talking, right? So the rhythm is constant, and this is such a cool thing and important thing to learn if you're going to play any Rolling Stones song, really, is always keep that wrist going, and sometimes you got to hit dead strings, so like this. <laughs> Right? Like that rhythm never stops. Like that. Um, and you're just allowing the fretting hand to control the rhythm. So this never stops. This always is playing the same, you know, up, down, up, down, up, down rhythm, you know? And you're just applying pressure or relieving pressure from the chord in order to kind of accentuate the rhythm. Like that. Um, and that's that's pretty much it. That's all I want people to take away from uh, Keith's playing during Mick Taylor's solo. Um, the other thing, oh, and the reason I think that it's important for people to learn kind of the... That can help you navigate the neck a lot more. Um, you know, if you're up here in Sympathy for the Devil, you know, sometimes, I don't know, if you're in the middle of a solo, knowing that the E chord up here incorporates notes that you can play in a solo. You know, it just helps you navigate the neck a lot better. And when you realize, you're like, oh, man, if I can do you know, that in this key here, like if I, if I can, if I can play the E major pentatonic here, you know, then I can probably do something similar here. And you know, this will help you that learning those principles is going to help you if you want to learn like Mick Taylor's solo, right? I mean, being able to realize like, oh my God, like Mick Taylor switches between the major and the minor pentatonic during this solo. Like it's, you know, like he's nothing but butter. <laughs> like, I mean, my favorite lick from his solo is... Something like that. And then he's like... You know, like he he walked himself back into the major pentatonic from the minor pentatonic with bends, which is like I don't know, such a cool lick. Like, <laughs> something like that. I don't know. It's cool, man. I love that that version of sympathy. But yeah, anyway, hopefully, I feel like it wasn't very, uh, I don't know, it might not have been my best communication, but anyway, hopefully someone gets something from this. Good luck.